Hello, welcome to the third section of our full stack Kotlin application where we are building a full stack Kotlin application using Spring on the back end and React on the front end. In this section, we'll be going through business logic layer and especially data integrity on our APIs. We'll introduce a validation to our Spring WebFlux functional endpoints and we will be starting to separate concerns between routes and handlers as well as separating models between business layer and the web layer. And finally, we'll take a look at the DTO transformations and how those can be used in our business layer. In this video, we'll be starting with a Spring REST endpoint validation. We'll introduce ourselves with model DTOs and validation DTOs. We'll also add a new dependency to the application and this time Hibernate Validator and then we'll implement JSR 303 annotation based bean validation to our application model. And finally, we'll modify our functional API route to respond and do the validation itself. Previously, we created an API route and a view router. And now we will take the next step on that and add validation to our API route. So here we have a little bit refactored API route where we take in a post request and it comes down to path API slash projects. And in here we have a specific type of entity that we want to receive. And we do also want to do a validation based on that. So let's get started on that and add a new dependency to our Cradle build. That dependency is called Hibernate Validator and that comes from org hibernate namespace. So we'll add the new dependency and we'll also add a new value for us. So we'll be again retrieving the version number from parent properties. In this case, we'll call that Hibernate Validator version. And let's add that property version in there as well. In this case, the version is 6.02 and final. Now that we have Hibernate Validator in class path, we can start taking a look at our model. So I have created a DTO object in here and we will be using this project DTO as the object that comes into us. We also have an open class that is an, a super class for all of the entities that come into our endpoints. This super class or abstract open class is validatable and it has two properties in itself. One of them is a list of field errors and the other one is generic error. And the field error itself then has a field and a message. The field loosely maps to the property name in our own DTO and the message itself is the error message. So now if we start adding the validations in here, we can add a meta annotation at first. So we'll add get and then use the Java X validation annotation called size to define the actual actual uh, validation itself. So we'll do those validations for both name and owner. And then we add a new meta annotation and URL that is coming from Hibernate Validator. So now if we do a post request with, with incorrect URL, this will fail and the same if our owner or name in the JSON we pass in is too short. Now that those guys are in, we'll add one more annotation to our validatable object. So since we want our project DTO to extend our validatable, we'll do that first. And now that that is extended, we'll add JSON include, JSON include non null annotation to the validatable object. This way, if either field errors or generic error is null, it won't be included into the payload that we pass to the front end when our API is hit. Let's modify the config now that we are here. So API routes is the actual endpoint that we want to modify. We are passing in a project service in there. That is this reference. And we will be also passing in 
a validator so we'll add prematurely a new reference in there as well and now if we jump into api roots class we can start building our validation logic so the first thing we can do is add the actual validator this validator comes injected from spring boot so we have added our hibernate validator into the class path or uh, as a compile time de dependency and because that is found spring boot will give us a validator for free the next step is then parse the json that comes in modify that and map that into our dto and after we have mapped that into our dto we can start doing the actual validation on that now let's delete our server response first and start fetching the actual object from the body of our request we have this function called body to mono that we can use and we'll jump on that and add a type param in there in this case it is project dto so now we have a mono of type project dto and we can start mapping through that first mapping we do is the actual validation in this case so we'll do the project and because the project in this case already is project dto we can just pass it into our validator and call the validate function with that the validate function returns in a set of violations so we'll see if there are any violations is not empty and if there are violations we will modify the project object itself because we have extended the project object extended the validatable object with the project we have the field errors available for us so we can map through those and populate the field errors based on uh, the violation itself to get the uh, correct name or field in this case for our field error we use property path into string and the message itself is simply called a message so now that we have conditionally added the violations into projects field, field errors we can return the project and our pipeline is starting to grow next step is then returning the actual response from our reactive pipeline so we'll do a flat map function in here and we know that the param that comes in is our project object so we'll check if field errors exist and we'll do a standard when clause on those first thing we do is if it is a null if we haven't actually populated the field errors then we'll just respond with the uh, with the default server response okay and body mono just and the actual project that was passed in otherwise we know that field errors has been populated so we'll respond with the same object but we change the ok as a response type to be unprocessable entity instead this way we'll have validation on our endpoint and if we spin up the application we will be seeing the validation errors coming into us previously we were running our application through cradle now we have modified this a little bit so this is the third way to run the application i have created a new run configuration on intellij and in here i have defined our main class which in this case is within our api module the class called config and if we run this we have the full capabilities of spring boot dev tools at our hand and the hot swapping of our classes works as designed and it will work most of the time very nicely let's jump into presentation mode and pull up the console from here while we are compiling the project the spring boot dev tools will take a catch of it and restart our netty server that is good and we can start checking our validations so if we jump into postman previously we returned hello from the endpoint now we will be passing the same object in we should be getting the same object back as well like this now 
if we then change the name to be something else and modify the URL to not have the HTTPS uh, prefix, we should be getting validation of field errors back as well. So we have a URL field erroring and our name field erroring as well.